Hello everyone, welcome to another episode. Today I'm showing you my new printer slash scanner slash toy. Basically, I decided to buy a new printer for my business and after some research and the opinion of my brother, I decided to get one of those Epsons with uh, this new kind of technology that is called EcoTank that basically promises a ridiculous amounts of ink and printing in general. So I am opening the box to see what's inside and we will see how this printer works on the Linux operating system. So here we are with the printer, it is an Epson and the model is L6160. It supports a printing resolution of 4800 and 1200, 4800 uh, vertically, 1200 horizontally and uh, 1200 dpi scanning resolution. Basically, I chose this model because it also supports all the connectivity options that I wanted, which means a USB, Ethernet and Wi-Fi. Plus, it, has, it supposedly has a nice, uh, a nice looking LCD panel. Again, as I said before, it has the EcoTank technology, which promises thousands of pages of uh, printing. And I was pleasantly surprised as I saw in the internet on some page that it supposedly had supported up to uh, 6,000 pages uh, per one uh, cartridge of ink. Uh, I say cartridge because this thing, uh, in quotes, because this thing does not have cartridge. But as I see now, I haven't done it before, this model supports up to about 14,000 pages, which is great. Uh, so, without any further delay, let's open the box and see what's inside. So basically this is it, uh, the box contains the unit, of course, uh, the cable, the power cable and uh, user manual and CDs and, and the CD with the drivers, uh, the drivers which I am going to use because uh, we will see how I'm going to install this machine on Linux. And other than that, it contains uh, two, sets, two sets of bottles uh, with ink to fill the printer. It contains uh, two bottles of black ink, which are double, uh, I think they are double of the rest of the bottles. And two bottles of each color, cyan, magenta and yellow. Uh, what the box does not contain which is important to know is that it does not contain a USB cable to connect it to the computer. So I will have to find some cable because I expect that to be included. Anyway, that is it. I'm going to install it in the computer now and possibly see how this thing prints. Okay guys, uh, before we move on to the installation part, uh, I guess some of you might want to see how you fill this thing with ink. So uh, I'm gonna take this bottle of ink and fill the printer with it. First we open the printer like that and here we have the the tank with the with the inks. Uh, we open it like that, I guess. Then we open the bottle. We 
we open the slot that fits, that matches the color of the bottle and then we put the bottle inside the slot. Before I put it in, uh, I want to show you that each bottle with uh, its specific color has a specific pattern on top of its head that matches the equivalent slot in the printer. This pattern is like a key, so you cannot uh, go wrong, you cannot uh, make a mistake and put the wrong color in the wrong slot. So now what we do is we we open the slit a little bit more and put the bottle in its place. I can hear it started uh, flowing in. You can see the the ink increasing in the printer. And that was it. After a minute, the ink is now in the printer. Okay guys, I'm here now in my office. I connected uh, the printer into the computer with a USB cable. As a note, for anyone that buys this printer, and the first time you open it, it has to go through some initialization phase for 10 minutes where it calibrates its head and uh, the printer quality settings. That's done. And after that, we will have to uh, install the drivers to the operating system so that the printer becomes functional. But before we do that, uh, the first thing that we have to do is to open a terminal and type the following command lsusb Now with this command, what this command does is show you a list of all the USB devices that are connected to your computer and are detected by the operating system and in this case you can see that uh, my printer is now detected as a USB device it is detected, but that does not mean it is functional yet, until at least we install the driver. The second thing that we have to do is to uh, download and install the drivers. However, in order to do that, we first have to find them. You will see, if you buy this product, you will see that uh, in the package it does not mention anywhere Linux. It only uh, mentions that uh, Epson supports Windows and Mac OS. However, I found out that Epson does provide uh, Linux drivers and I guess uh, they don't mention it because they don't want to provide support for it. So in case some problem occurs, they don't want to answer to your calls or emails. Nevertheless, uh, you can find the drivers as, uh, as follows. The first way which is the most simple, is to go to Google and type uh, Epson Linux drivers. And from there you can follow the first link. The other way, I'm showing you both ways, just for fun, uh, you can go to epson.com, to their official site, and from there you can pick your region. I picked the uh, United States. I don't know why because I live in Europe, but anyway, and then from there, um, from that page, you will not find any link to the Linux uh, drivers, but if you go to the research field and type uh, plain Linux and scroll down a little bit, you will find a link that says Linux support for Epson products, which will send you to the same page that Google did. Okay, from there, we can click the uh, Linux drivers for Epson products and from the new page, you have to type the, your model, your printer model name. I type mine. Again, you choose your operating system to be Linux. And here we are. 
from this table we can see that we have uh, many files available to download. I have to note that in case you are not computer savvy, which I guess you are not because you are looking a video about Linux, but nevertheless, uh, if you have connected this printer to a normal PC that is uh, x86 architecture, or that means that it has an either Intel or AMD processor, then you are not interested in the packages that say ARM. These are for another type of CPU. So uh, what we have to download is the, uh, the first package, ESCPR Driver 2, the Epson pr uh, Printer Utility, and the all-in-one package, uh, which I see, is the Scanner Driver. When you click to a link, we go to another page. We have to accept uh, their terms and condi conditions. And the final thing that I want to say for the download process is that, again, you will see uh, for each package, you will see multiple files available to download. You will have to pick a file that fits for your uh, specific Linux distribution. And in general, there are two kinds of uh, files, either RPM or DEB. RPM are for uh, Red Hat and Fedora based operating systems, Linux systems. And the DAB, the DEB files are for Debian and Ubuntu based systems. Now I run uh, Kubuntu 18.04, so uh, I will choose a DEB file uh, for my CPU architecture, which is an, a 64 bit uh, CPU. So I pick this download. Finally, we are now ready to install the drivers and see the printer working at last, hopefully. Uh, what we have to do once we download all the necessary files is to execute the following three commands. Uh, again, we go back to our terminal that we had opened before. From our terminal, go to the folder where we downloaded the, the driver files. And from there, we will have to install the files. Now, the first command uh, is a prerequisite before we install the files. We have to type the command sudo apt install lsb. This is a prerequisite, a dependency, let's say, of the driver. It's a, it's a separate package that will have to exist in the system before we install the driver. So after we type the command, we have to accept download files. Perfect. And now we are ready to install the actual driver files. In order to do that, we have to type a command that it seems complicated, but it's not really. First, we uh, list the, our catalog to see the, the file names. And once we have the names, uh, we actually type uh, sudo to execute the command as, an, as a root user, as an administrator, uh, the package, the package, dash i, which I guess means install. And then we have to uh, type the file name, each file name on its own. So let's start with the first one. Epson inject printer. That went well. And I will do the same for the second file. sudo dpackage das i and the file name of the second file. So supposedly everything has went well and the printer is now uh, usable by the system. Let's check this out. It seems that I was mistaken. I was not uh, yet ready to use my printer. It, it needed one more step. So uh, basically on Linux systems, after you install the driver, you have to go to uh, the operating system settings. In this case, because I'm running a KD system, um, I go to the system settings of KDE and on the left menu 
under hardware, you have to click printers. And in this page, it will be initially blank. You have to click on the add printer. Basically, it has a button right in the middle that says add printer. And when you do that, because the driver has thankfully been installed on the system correctly, uh, you can see on the local printers some uh, options. I picked, I think, the last one. I clicked next and everything was easy and went uh, fine. Now that the printer is finally ready, I can tell you that from uh, the system settings you have a configure button. You also have a print test page, which is a classic, in, I think, in all operating systems. Uh, and then you have a configure button from where you can uh, adjust a couple of basic settings, like uh, the print quality and uh, it has a couple of options for different types of paper, I think. And also the page size, whether you want color or off and such. Uh, not much. I was expecting a little bit more, to be frank with you. Uh, for example, I was expecting a screen uh, or a window where I could see the remaining ink levels. You may ask why you want to do that. Uh, and that would be a correct question, because for this printer, thankfully, you can see the remaining ink levels by just looking in the front of the printer. Anyway, uh, so, having done that, I was able to print my first page. I'm not sure if you can see it correctly. It seems to work fine. Finally, I want to show you what other options uh, you have when you try to actually print a page from a specific program. So, for example, I will open uh, the PDF that I, that I printed before. And when we go to print, we have basically two buttons. We have the printer properties, uh, where we can select whether we want to print in portrait or landscape. And then finally, we have another op button which says options. And in which what I'm interested in is that you can select whether you want to print in color or grayscale. And also, if your printer supports a double-sided printing, like my model does, uh, you can select uh, here one of these options and it will print you uh, both sides of the paper, like this. So, that was it, guys. That was my review for Epson L6160 and how it works on Linux. I hope you uh, I covered as much as you wanted to see. I uh, hope you liked it. If you liked it, you might want to share it with your friends and see you on another video.